Now, oftentimes what will happen is, uh, especially with larger biomass boilers, and this could happen with a large building with a, a big load, you, you need more thermal storage than what one tank can provide, okay? So I did a comparison here. I said, maybe it's a solar thermal system. Uh, maybe it's a pellet boiler system. Uh, let's say we're looking for around 500 gallons of thermal storage, all right? We could do that with 419 gallon tanks. And maybe, maybe it's a situation where we can't get a large tank into the building or into the space where the storage has to go. So we're gonna go with these smaller tanks. Well, that's okay. And I'm gonna show you how to pipe that, but um, it's very important that you understand that there is much higher ratio of surface area to volume when you go with multiple smaller tanks versus a single larger tank. And why is that important? surface area to volume ratio. Well, the more surface area you have, the more heat loss you're going to have. And essentially, if the water temperatures are the same in both scenarios here, uh, and we have 50% more surface area with the smaller tanks, we're gonna have 50% more standby loss. So, uh, you know, I did some simple calculations here, assuming we had flat ended cylinders for the tanks, and we came up with a four smaller tanks versus a single 476 gallon tank. And I used a height to diameter ratio of three for all these tanks, all right? It's a typical height to diameter ratio. Um, we'd actually end up 59% more surface area with the four small tanks. Now, again, I'm not saying don't do the four small tanks. You may have other constraints that simply don't allow this size tank to be present. And if you are working with a big tank like this, first of all, it's probably gonna be an ASME certified tank based on codes. I know in New York State, anything over 119 gallons has to have an ASME certification. And it's likely gonna be a steel, welded steel tank. Uh, look at the logistics. How are you gonna get that to the site? How are you gonna get it in the building? How are you going to insulate it? Uh, there's a lot more questions with that type of tank compared to buying a pre-insulated 119 gallon tank. So, you know, there's scenarios for both of these, but realize that the uh, heat loss is going to be greater with the multiple smaller tanks. Okay. Now, how do you pipe it? Well, there's several ways and uh, we're kind of getting near the end here. You could do reverse return piping like this. This is putting all three tanks in parallel. And it's also setting up valving and unions with the potential to disconnect any of these tanks and the potential to remove any of these tanks without shutting down the other tanks. Now I say that, imagine these three tanks are parked up against a wall and you put this piping in in front of the tanks just the way it's shown. The question is, how are you gonna get that middle tank out of there if it has to come out for any reason. It's easy to shut the ball valves off and open the unions, but how are you gonna get it around that piping? So think about these things. If you're going to do something like this, this piping really needs to be up overhead so that you can physically remove one of those tanks. Now, again, that's a design decision you have to make. Uh, my thoughts, uh, especially with ASME certified tanks, in a closed system properly maintained with low oxygen levels, these tanks should last for decades, many decades. So the likelihood of having to remove a tank is pretty small, but that's a decision you have to make. If you want to be you know, the ultimate in terms of flexibility to remove a tank, make sure the piping allows it. And the other thing you'll see here, there's a lot of piping and a lot of hardware, and that's going to add up costs significantly compared to a single large tank. Now here's, a, I showed you a slide earlier of three 600 gallon ASME tanks tied in with a uh, half a million BTU per hour pellet boiler. Well, there's, there's how they did it. Not a pretty picture in my, imagine you have to take that tank in the back out of there. It's, it's going to be a major, major cut project. <laughs> There's just no way that tank is coming out of there without basically taking just about all of that piping out. 
So this was not a well thought out system. Uh, it is in, it functions, but um, it, it certainly doesn't address the potential to have to remove one of those tanks. Here's a little bit simpler piping. This is direct return. It, it takes away the reverse return aspect. If you do this, make sure that you have a balancing valve on each tank. Um, an example is that Kalefi uh, quick setter valve. It has a little flow meter built into it. So you could turn on the pumps over here, probably on your heat source, and you could just go through with a screwdriver and adjust these valves so you're getting approximately, it doesn't have to be exact, but approximately the same flow going through the tanks. And then I would go over here, turn on your load circulators and do the same thing, adjust your uh, flow rates for, for balance. Um, and the nice thing about this valve is uh, not only can you use it for balancing, if you did have to isolate a tank, you could sh completely shut off the flow with it. Uh, same argument applies with the piping. If your intent is to be able to remove this tank from service, any of these tanks without shutting down a system, um, you have to make sure that piping is out of the way. Now, I wanna show you one other piping method for multiple tanks, and I'm showing this for two tanks, but this could apply to more than two tanks. This is actually a combination of two tanks that are close coupled with a fitting that I happen to come across. It's made by a company called Metroflex. And I'm sure most of you are very familiar with what's called a Fernco fitting. Well, first thing I want to tell you, this is not a fern co-fitting. Fern co-fittings are for drainage, waste, and ventilation piping. They aren't really rated for temperature and not much pressure. Uh, this is a reinforced high temperature uh, coupling that has high quality stainless steel clamps on it. And it's re reinforced with stainless steel rings, both inside and outside. And it's actually rated up to 225 degree service temperature at 75 PSI. They make this available from two inch up to 12 inch pipe sizes. And this would be a simple way to connect two tanks side by side. Um, basically what you're doing is just putting a short length of pipe in here that I'm assuming threads into the connection on the side of the tank. And then you're spanning that um, coupling across those two pieces of pipe. This is going to also give you uh, the ability to handle a slight amount of misalignment between those two tanks. Uh, in a perfect world, those tanks would sit on a perfectly flat floor. And when the tanks were built at the factory, they're, they're, um, the orientation of the piping coming out would be exactly the same. So they should just slide right next to each other and no problem. We don't live in a perfect world. So we've got slight misalignment due to a floor that's slightly out of flat or a tank that um, if the uh, weldment in that tank or however that pipe comes out of that tank is slightly off, we want the ability to have slight amount of compensation. And when I say slight, maybe an eighth of an inch. You're, you're not gonna be able to take a quarter inch or half an inch of misalignment with a coupling like this. So what that does is it, it closely couples those two tanks. And if you look at that overall configuration up here in the upper right, this is essentially a two pipe configuration with two tanks. We're taking our load circulator off or our, our load pipe goes off upstream so we can go direct to load with the heat and we're bringing our pipe back here and we've got our uh, flow coming back through here. I am showing a check valve uh, and I'm also showing a check valve up here in the circulator and that's just again we don't want we don't want flow to reverse thermosiphon between the tanks and the heat source when uh, the heat source is off. So it's a nice uh, option. We have used this kind of a uh, design detail before closely coupling the tanks. Uh, it certainly reduces down the amount of piping. The one thing it doesn't provide, and this is not, in my opinion, not a highly necessary option, uh, you can't take one tank out of this picture and keep the other tank running without having to reconfigure some piping. So we don't have ball valves shutting off tanks and, and the ability to take it apart. But again, high quality tanks, closed loop system, good maintenance of the system, uh, very minimal chance that you'll have to do that. 